Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we have a new release of Unity. Now this is from the tech stream, which is the, uh, this isn't a beta or alpha release, but uh, good luck using this in production, as opposed to the long-term stable release, which is if you're starting a project now and you want stability across the course of the project, that's the release you use. So this is a little bit more on the cutting edge, but is ready for production use. And we're going to start off with a quick hands-on presentation of two of the biggest new features in Unity 2021.2, according to me, at least. And I think these are actually kind of interesting. The first one is quite small in a way, but really kind of changes the way you use Unity, and that is the new features feature. Okay, that sounded weird. But basically, more and more of Unity is moving to packages, and what you can now do under the Unity registry, just basically come on in here, Unity registry, you'll notice at the top you now have features. We go ahead and you can now add features basically in a one-click setup. So if you're working on a 2D game, you can add the 2D feature, and what it will do is install these seven packages. Same way if you're working 3D character animation, it will bring in these things. You're working in augmented reality, these ones come in. Virtual reality, these ones come in. It does make the, um, the package manager a little bit cleaner and easier to use. You'll also notice if you look at your project, um, default will be engineering installed uh, already, already for you, but the other things you will add will come up here, and it'll clean up your uh, packages list to a certain degree as well. So that's a nice new feature, especially as Unity moves more and more into the world of packages. So we've got features now, and the other major new one, and this one's probably a little bit better of a demonstration, is if you come on down here, you will notice UI Toolkit, and this is a way for making cross-platform GUIs or UIs with um, the Unity game engine. So you see here, you have a samples option here, and you can see some of uh, the features and functionalities available here. So you can create buttons, scroll fields, you get some C-sharp example of how they work, uh, vectors, so you see the example up here in action, so buttons, buttons, so on, and then there's the code required to create them. So you got all kinds of UI controls that you can go ahead and create using the UI builder. And if you want to access the UI builder itself, just basically come up here, window, once again, UI toolkit, and then UI builder. And right here, you get a visual tool for creating user interface. You can see a preview of it over here. Uh, you've got control over how it is shown. Uh, you've got different themes. So if you prefer a light versus dark, you can do so. Uh, you add new items over here. So CSS, or sorry, not CSS, but USS, basically they're the same thing. I think I noticed down here, we have a number of visual objects that can be brought in. So if you need a label, there and then all of your various properties for controlling it are available over here. So it is basically a UI designer like we've gotten used to since the world of like Visual Basics 4. Um, and yes, I just plural basic. Visual Basic 4, not Visual Basics 4, but you know what I mean. So anyways, uh, those are probably the two big kind of demonstrable items here, but there's also a number of improvements behind the scenes. So let's jump over and take a look at the details. There is a blog post kind of summarizing some of what we are going to look at available here. Uh, it also goes through the timeline. Uh, so you can see we're sitting right here. This is today, at least if you're watching this today, today is today. <laughs> uh, but what you're seeing here is you've got the long-term support version. The most recent one is 2020 LTE released earlier this year. Uh, so if you're going with stable, that's the version you want to use. And today we've got the new tech version, and you can expect a new one kind of in the first or second quarter of 2022. So that's what we were looking at today, this release uh, right here, 2021.2. This is going to be the last release of 2021. So the next one we're going to see is 2022.1. So you're only getting two tech releases per year now, uh, which I think is a good idea because constantly adding more stuff without focusing on stability, not a great idea. I like them going, I think it was four before, now they're down to two. So you can see the next one is going to be probably the three or four months into 2022. All right, so we jump in. They broke down the release notes into a couple of different categories. We're going to look at first for um, like artist and designer side of things. And one of the major things that they focused on here is remove, was improvements to the ERP. ERP being universal render pipeline. Unity now has three pipelines, which is basically the way graphics are drawn on screen. Uh, the standard pipeline, which is the way things were done before, then two programmable pipelines, uh, the ERP and the uh, HDRP. ERP is meant mainly for uh, lower end computers, um, mobile devices, that kind of thing. And they're moving more and more towards parity to the built-in. So that was one of the big updates with this guy. So now has enhanced support for decals or decals, improved subsurface ambient occlusion, uh, light cookies, light anchors, lens flares, so on and so forth. So it's getting closer and closer to fully being kind of at feature parity uh, with the render pipeline. Uh, again, we saw this in action earlier on, the UI toolkit, collection of like basically features, libraries, resources, and tools, etc., for creating um, user interfaces and editor extensions was actually kind of cool. So if you're doing, um, you know, your own tooling inside of Unity, you can use it that way as well. Uh, we've got scene view overlays. Um, 
overhauls the scene view UX by adding overlays for context-based tools as well as customized floating toolbars to help you uh, work faster. I actually think this is one such example, but I don't think this is brand new. I believe this was in the past, but it may have been in a beta release. Uh, so definitely some updates on the way things look. Uh, sequencer for non-linear content empowers you to uh, fish... Uh, yeah, efficiently create linear content such as movies and game cinematics. Everybody's kind of moving towards they're using their game development tools more and more for cinematic production. I guess it's not a shock. Uh, 2D improvements here. The ERP, again, a lot of focus on the ERP here. Very little focus on the HDRP. Just one of those things to be aware of with this release. Um, so new 2D features such as 2D lights in the Light Explorer, 2D custom lighting and shader graph, sprite mask material filter uh, in Render Debugger, VFX graph compatibility. It also updates to 2D animation, 2D uh, Photoshop document importer, and more. Uh, clouds and volumetric fog in HDRP. So like I said, not much about HDRP, hey, but some here. Uh, so add different kinds of realistic and animated procedural cloud layers, volumetric clouds and local fog, fog volumes. Uh, advanced, it's access advanced settings uh, for more artistic control. Uh, improvements to the terrain system, streamlined workflow, usability improvements, help you create terrain more efficiently. Um, add new sculpting brushes, add the ability to bridge, clone, noise, terrace, or terrace and twist terrain. Uh, deferred rendering support for mobile. You can now use either forward or deferred rendering paths uh, to build mobile projects in the ERP. Normally, this is more for uh, VR versus not VR, but you may have a use for uh, forward rendering in your project, and you can now do so in ERP. Uh, create advanced effects with the VFX graph, shader graph, uh, official support for ERP. So again, ERP got a lot of love here. And access to HDRP tessellation from shader graph. Film quality cinematics and camera. Again, they're definitely moving more towards their tools being used for movie production. Uh, extended lighting possibilities for the HD render pipeline. Um, create scenes with dynamic lighting using enlightened pre-baked global illumination or screen space global illumination. Area lights now work with hair and fabric shaders and use the HDRP path tracer for high quality renders or ground truth reference. And then we've got more options available for shade tree shaders. And so that is the new stuff from the artistic side of things. And this next part is more aimed at the programmer side of the fence. And there's a lot less here, to be honest. Uh, but one of them is pretty big. So we've got a uh, movement. So now that uh, once mono once uh, Mono went open source, suddenly we started seeing updates in the world of Unity again. And now we've kind of, they're coming up almost to, to, well, actually they are at parity now. So upgraded the bundled Mono version and exposed the latest .NET language features in, uh, via C Sharp 8 leapfrogging years of Mono versions, mostly because they didn't want to license Mono, it seems, but hey, that's the thing. Also, .NET Standard 2.1 is now supported. Uh, productivity feature improvements. Uh... Oh, the feature sets. I already showed you that in action. Quicker way of bringing um, your packages in using the package manager. Uh, performance improvements. Uh, improved stability for VFX implementations and uh, advanced shader graph integration to VFX graph. Um, and more features such as rendered lit particles in the ERP. Um, so yeah, that that is the major changes here. So if you want, uh, there are full release notes available as well. These are getting really into the weeds. So th this is a level of detail that I, I'm never going to cover in these kind of videos because, well, mostly it's boring. Uh, but second, you, you can you can get this in the linked article down below. So if you really want to get into the exact issue, also keep in, keep in mind, uh, this is Unity. Things do break. Uh, there are known issues. The funny thing is the known issues actually goes on for, for quite a while. So one of those things to be aware of, um, but these release notes, I'm still scrolling by the way. So uh, if you wanna see everything that happened in this, like the little bug fixes or such, if you had a problem in the past or you get a new problem when you upgrade to this one, do check the full release notes. But for most people, this does not make for a very exciting read. Uh, so one of those things to be aware of. But this is all the things that were fixed and broken in this particular release. And so the other thing that you may wanna check out is the, um, the Unity UI toolkit. We saw it briefly in action. There is a documentation page kind of over um, the the tools, what's available there, features that are available, the animation that you can perform and so on. So if you want to jump into that, definitely a nice new feature. Uh, so there is a, a little bit more in depth. I will link this in the linked article down below. But that is that. That is Unity 2021.2. Uh, biggest thing here is, again, ERP is the universal render pipeline. It's pretty much almost... Uh, on par with the standard pipeline feature-wise. Uh, some improvements across the board, uh, some cinematic improvements for sure. Uh, C-sharp 8, mono being version being the newest, the new UI toolkit, um, the new uh, feature settings in the asset manager. And I think those are the highlights of this particular release. Um, oh, and the new uh, UX stuff that they continue to do uh, for 
things like this. So that is Unity 2021.2. This is going to be the last stable tech release of the year. We may have a beta or an alpha or some kind of release in between. I'm not 100% certain. But this is it for Unity releases in 2021. The next one will be 2022.1, uh, probably a couple of months into next year. This release actually came a little bit before schedule, I think. Uh, so the next one may be as well. It'd be interesting to see. But I would expect three or four months at least. Again, keep in mind, they only do two major uh, LTS, sorry, two major uh, tech stream releases a year. Um, so that is the thing. And again, if you're starting a project today and stability is the most important thing to you, you want to use the LTS version, not this one. But if you're willing to be a little bit more on the cutting edge, uh, this is it. Let me know what you think. 2021.2 LTS version down below. Do you like the changes they've made? Uh, let me know. Comments down below. And I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.